cool. So we're at five after the hour now. You want to take it away, Frederick? Sure. So welcome to the Network Service Match meeting. So to get started, let's go ahead and um, do a agenda bashing. So is there anything that is not on the agenda that, that people would like to talk about? Okay. Well, I, I I have more or less copy pasted uh, some uh, selected uh, points from last week, so there's not really like an updated agenda. I don't know. Maybe we need to. I, I also went through and, and tidied that up a little bit. Okay, good. Tidying it up is not the right word. I, I went through it and I think I added one or two things as I went. Perfect. Thanks. Right. So and I, but I think probably the the right focus is kind of where we we arrive at, which is. Uh, the release when we get there. And we do have Alex, who's been kind enough to join us to talk through progress on the logos as well when we get to that point in the agenda. So, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to Frederick to go walk us through. Okay, and uh, so those, good, that's been added to the agenda already, so we're, we're good. Okay, so we have, so events-wise, we have this particular meeting, which occurs every uh, every Tuesday at 8 a.m., we have a documents meeting, which occurs every Wednesday at 8 a.m., and we have a use case meeting, which occurs every other week on Monday at 8 a.m. So the the next this coming Monday is the CNCF Telco Working Group Birds of a Feather. So mm. uh, sorry, that's been renamed to the Telco User Group. <laughs> So it's not the Literally coming like Monday. Yeah. Sorry. It's the first Monday of the month. So that oh, would first, be... First and third, yeah. First and third, yeah. That it's would be um, May, 6th, May 6th, I, I believe. I believe Ooh, you're right. Uh, so I believe that all the other Monday, Mondays are belonging to us. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so this brings uh, an interesting uh, point because we have an extra Monday. Do we do we use the Monday or do we keep it free? Yeah, I mean, I, um, bonus Monday. Yeah, already I think uh, Ramki has scheduled it or for the you, yeah. use case. No free Mondays right. for you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, in that scenario, uh, it occurs every every other week except for the last Monday if there's an extra bonus Monday. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for the use case document, so so we will be having we will be having a uh, NSM use case meeting this um, this coming Monday. But I mean, I think it is technically the second and fourth week of Monday, and possibly the sixth on really odd months. <laughs> so yeah, second, second, fourth, and fifth. Um. Yep. In fact, uh, yeah, it'll be great if you can join. I think we made some very good progress last week. And you also identified some uh, solid open source implementation of EPC to sort of, you know, kick off uh, something real, right? I mean, um, OMEC project. So it'd be really good if you guys can join. Yeah, I apologize about yesterday. I, I had something really important that popped up that I was not able to avoid, uh, but I should have no problems with uh, future members. Awesome, thank you. Oh, and also um, on the web, our uh, web page, is there a way to sort of point out that the use case calls are on every the second and fourth Mondays? Because uh, I mean, Prem, at least Prem was saying there's no easy way, not logical. So no, because right now it's like you know uh, every week is the, the indicator, right? So we changed it to seventh, fourth, and fifth Mondays on the on the document. Are we wanting to make probably that on the calendar? Is that what people are getting at? Because I can do that. Yeah, that'll be cool. So basically, yeah, just want to because there is um, this confusion is there. It use cases at every Monday or other or when it is right. People get very confused. Great. So we had a uh, container world in 
uh, last week, the Prem gave a talk. I, I saw lots of great pictures come out of it, or lots of great comments. And so, uh, any, anything else that you want to share, Prem, before we uh, continue on? Yes, um, actually, uh, the container world, um, this is basically focusing on Kubernetes and containers. And this year, they have added the uh, service mesh as a separate track. And um, basically, uh, uh, the I gave under the service mesh track and uh, uh, people were uh, really excited. Uh, I, I was requesting people to probably uh, join our calls and then start contributing to it. But uh, uh, the talk was well received. Um, what I did was I uh, brought in uh, the concept of 5G and Edge uh, and also uh, explained about uh, Kubernetes CRD. Um, and then how it all connects and how network service mesh is going to probably play an important role um, in the uh, in the uh, uh, network transformation is what I highlighted. Um, yeah. I can Sounds probably, great. Yeah, share the presentation. I'll probably put it sometime in the wiki page so that people can access it. Yeah. Cool. Good. So we have KubeCon EU coming up in Barcelona in May 21st to 23rd. We have, so book your hotels now if you have not done so. Um, if you forget, if, if the prices get too high around the Fira, they do have good public transportation. So you can uh, book along the rail. Uh, we have uh, intro and uh, deep dive talks over at KubeCon EU. So feel free to come and join us on uh, on those. Also, we Elephant also is have... giving the demo booth. So uh, Frederick uh, uh, would be, would probably, if we want to take that uh, offer, we probably need uh, someone to man the booth in the Elephant. Cool. So we also have Elephant demo booth offer. So is there anything we want to do about that right uh, at the moment? I mean, I, I could spend, I should be able to spend some time in the booth. Awesome. So I'll probably include you in the thread with the Brandon. Uh, so I told Brandon that uh, you had, I spoke to you and then you had uh, maybe accept, uh, agreed to help it. Uh, yeah, and so well, one thing as well is, so anyone who, anyone who is here is also welcome to join, to join in on the booth or help out as well, so. Uh, it's it doesn't it doesn't just have to be it doesn't just have to be me. So if anyone wants to be uh, wants to help out in that way, like uh, we'll we'll help you get up to speed. So so this is a this we can probably use the same uh, uh, ENSM demo with ODL, and it's simple uh, uh, use case. I have a, a instruction that you can just follow, and then you can have it. And uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, for your information, uh, this is available in the packet.net, uh, which means uh, you can access it uh, from anywhere without the uh, VPN, and you should be able to show the demo. Nice. So uh, one other thing as well for, for that particular demo, if it, how difficult would it be to set up a set of scripts or something to uh, for people to reproduce it on their own? Okay, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, let me check on that. I'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Cool. So let's get through the agenda so we can get to the main uh, items as well. So we have FIDO mini summits coming up. Uh, I have a uh, talk that's been accepted about NSM and FIDO and what's gone well, what's uh, what's been problematic. So we'll be giving a talk on that. Um, both Nikolai and I have submitted presentations for Cloud Native Network Service Day. So we will uh, see. Uh, we'll see what comes out of that. Uh, I don't think they've posted anything on, on what's been accepted yet. Yeah, and it should have been posted by now, I think. Uh, or at least I haven't seen any emails about it. They usually post an email before they post yeah. the schedules. So yeah, I mean, see if been notifications uh, yesterday, so. Who knows? Maybe uh, running slightly behind. Yeah, probably. Good. Yeah. Okay. So we have uh, KubeCon China coming up in Shanghai, where uh, Nikolai and I uh, 
should be giving an intro maintainer track um, in, in, um, in the main conference. We have ONS Europe. The call for paper is open for anyone who wants to uh, go to Antwerp and talk about network service mesh. The call for paper closes in mid-June. Uh, we have KubeCon and MEF in November. So MEF is more of a telco focused uh, thing. It's in Los Angeles. And KubeCon, uh, which is going to be our primary focus uh, in this time period, is going to be in November 18th through 21st. So the call for papers open up in May. So with that, we now have a active network service mesh Twitter account. Um, special thanks to Lucina for taking that up. And uh, is there anything else that we want to talk about on the social media side? Like uh, we have the word team. So I assume that there, there may be more than one person contributing or perhaps there's a slot open for people to help contribute. Okay, that's about the number of the stars that we have, right? Okay, so. 114 followers to start to 369 and 369 following. So we should. So let let's see how let's see how that changes over time. Okay. Um, an easy way to do that is make sure to stick the end service mesh on the presentations. So with that. Is there One other thing I wanted to make point I wanted to make is uh, Lucina has been doing an amazing job on the, the Twitter account. We have had so much cool traffic since she took over last week. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I I do I, I suspect most of those 114 followers probably came from uh, likely came from her starting her interactions. <laughs> like we, we were we were not uh, we were not active on it at all. So great, so we have a new uh, logo conversation. So uh, Alex, you have the floor. Sorry about that, oh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Great, yep. um, I will share my screen, I guess that's probably the best. Okay. Yep. Uh, do you see now? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so I revised some of the logos based on our, the feedback that I got. I, I got rid of the spider as we discussed for now. Um, and I tried to stick to only doing the horizontal versions until we decide on a, a direction and then obviously stacked and icon will be easy after that. Um, and I know NSM will be the version we use uh, another version, but I wrote out the full word for now. Um, so yeah, I. These are obviously rough, but based on uh, what I heard from all of you, I thought that this might help you, us. Can you mute yourself? Your typing is very loud. Oh, that's, I don't know if that's, I'm not typing. Oh, can you hear me? No, 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 you're fine, Alex. Wrong oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I don't, I'm not typing. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um, no, that's okay. Cool, cool. Okay, okay great. Um, so, can, uh, yeah, so I'll just scroll down, I guess, as I did last time. Mm -hmm. And you can just let me know if you see anything or any directions. Is it possible to to get this out there? Should I go put put this up and we'll continue the email thread and get some comments from there as well? Ooh, sure. The, yeah. Sure. The little globe mesh thing is kind of cool. What do other folks think? What are you guys seeing that you really like? I like the one with the 3D effect. It just went past. Yeah. Yeah, that, that one I actually kind of like the little sort of, sort of dodecahedron um, 3D effect. Further down? Yep, from, further down? Uh, down? Uh, further up, up, up. Sorry. Up, up. <laughs> uh, one more? One more, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah this one. This yeah, one. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, no, I, 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 I kind of like that one too. Yes. Um, there, are, there are a lot of good things here, actually. Um, so I, I do kind of like that dodecahedron there. Um, and then I, I'm kind of fond of the, the swirl that's in the, 
the, the sort of round swirly one that's near the top now that's in the two over. Yeah, that's quite nice. Yeah. Yeah, um, great. Uh, yeah, so obviously these are rough. So I, I feel like once I get some um, ones that you like or a couple of people like or whatever, I will do, I'll do the same thing again and I'll be able to revise um, and make them look better. That, that, that seems wise. Because there's, I know there's a lot going on here. <laughs> um, yeah, so would you rather me just send you the PDF and then we can work, for, or I, th I think I sent it to you, but then we can do the email thread. Just put it into the email thread. Um, as oh, okay, okay. Revise. I think that would be awesome because that way that everybody gets a chance to, to comment on it. Um, because one of the things that I, I found super useful about the conversation that we had with the last round was um, there were so many perspectives that would never have occurred to me that turned out to be really good. Um, and so I, I think, you know, that ended up being very, very positive. Great. Okay. Sounds good. I'll do that uh, right now. Yeah, this great. makes me feel like it's a global project with uh, some of the logos, which is uh, a great thing. Great. Um, okay. So I'll do that right now. Thanks so much. Okay. So uh, the new conversation is to continue on the uh, on the mailing lists. Mm -hmm. So if you are in this meeting and are not aware of the mailing list, you should be able to find that mailing list on the uh, on the website. If you don't find it, get a hold of me or Ed on Slack, and we'll help you get there. So speaking of IRC versus. Uh, Slack. So we had a discussion before, just a reminder that uh, we are starting conversations on Slack. So there is a link in the agenda. It is slack.cncf.io that will get you an invite into Slack. And the channel is pound NSM. The pound is implicit. And there, there's, there's also a pound NSM dev, which you should probably get on the website and other places. Um, I think <clears throat> I think um, Nikolai, you know, correctly observed that devs hashing back and forth on some things can be a little dense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you please check my PR? <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm sharing, I hope my screen is in. So this is on our main site on community. We have the, in the communication channels, we have the mail, both mailing list and the Slack and uh, the invite link also. So. Cool, yeah, and, and also the IRC channel has been updated with that information as well. So if people okay. land the IRC channel, they, if they eventually notice the topic, they should know where to go. Great. <clears throat> so, so continuing on with that, we now have the Andromeda, we now have the Andromeda uh, release that is coming up. So there is an Andromeda backlog and uh, Nikolai, you have the floor to talk about everything in yeah. regards to that. <laughs> okay, thank you, Fred. So uh, first, a little bit of an update that I need to actually create a PR for this to update the specs also. But the original idea was that we call the branches NSM dash V whatever, whatever. But uh, I got inspired by how Kubernetes are doing their branching and tagging. So essentially the tags are done this way with V and then same there. And then the uh, branches are re release dash uh, and then the major and minor name of the uh, tax to be uh, released actually the which has to be released of that branch so uh, that's the I don't know uh, proposal to be done I don't know I mean um, I don't think that we have time to uh, vote here etc etc so if anyone has any any ob objections regarding this then just say it now and then I, I think we uh, did kind of previously agree on, on on this part of the release in terms of dates and whatnot which I, you know several weeks ago which i think is good mm -hmm. uh, 
And so like my, the only major thought that occurs to me is, um, you know, when do we want to pull the trigger uh, today on pulling the branch? Um, I want to go check and see if we have any major bug fixes out um, before we pull the branch. But then um, the other thing we're going to have to be careful about once we do pull the branch is making sure that any bug fixes to master get sure you picked the release and vice versa. Exactly. Uh, so my 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 one of the major things that I had that I wanted to have in and thank you Ed for actually merging these guys the Cir Circle CI was leaking uh, resources uh, so with that in I am more or less comfortable uh, in you know just branching and then monitoring uh, which uh, fixes should get uh, in both branches etc. But that's probably probably just me. So, um, yeah. So we, we we need to make sure that we that we're really diligent on this because what's going to end up happening if we're not careful is this is going to turn into a very manual process. So my my recommendation is that we start looking at uh, what others in the community who are doing something similar do because there's bound to be some type of bot or other similar thing we could use to uh, to test against various branches and when we commit we'll then commit into the other branches as well or merge into the other branches so i, I think that we uh, i think we should be a bit careful with this because worst case scenario is we end up having to uh manually cherry pick uh, every single every single thing that's uh, that's every little patch that, that's out there yeah, I mean that's uh, that's of course um, um, yeah yeah and and as as the person who's had to have who's owned that role in the past for other projects <laughs> uh, it, it takes up a lot of time so just, yeah 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 I know, <laughs> I know I mean I have also been in this shoes already but I mean um, uh, my main motivation behind branching is that once we have the branch uh, because. I mean, once we have the branch, there, there's even more kind of, you know, motivation about moving moving towards the release. Otherwise, we can sit just uh, having everything against master forever, right? <laughs> and we don't have much time. Yeah, and in the meantime, let's also add something to the, uh, um, to the uh, worksheet that... Um, when you when you commit something that's to for the person to indicate whether this is something that they believe should be should take back to the stable release or not so and uh, conveniently, well, what, conveniently we have a label <laughs> yeah I think that, that this one is uh... Ooh. I mean I've mostly been using that label on issues um, but you could also yeah. use PRs Labels work too. I'm happy with labels. I like labels. They're labely. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the, what uh, Fred said is that uh, yeah, I mean the the main testing would happen against master, I guess, and then uh, cherry picking this to back to stable could be a bit, you know, manual testing and. Uh, then I don't know. Maybe we can invent an integration branch, but then, the, yeah. I don't know. Well, we have an integration branch. It's called it's called release. So I think we, if we we just need to what we need to do is just see what's out there, just to see if uh, uh, if we can find something that'll like when you commit to master, and if it's labeled with v zero one or it's labeled with release mm -hmm, mm -hmm, zero mm -hmm. one, then it also runs the CI against those as well. So maybe it's possible we circle CI may even do it. So we, we just need to look to see what's, uh, what's out there. I see. So okay. We can, so we can do this and just auto, automate the process. So I think the tagging and so on, that will still be manual. Like that's on, that's on us to do it, but, uh, but we don't want people having to rerun the, the automation manually. Okay. Okay, let's let's quickly go through what's what's going on uh, with the issue. So we have a couple of IPv6 related uh, PRs that have been that, that are being worked on. I think that we have a good progress here uh, with IPv6 payloads. 
Um, the problem actually is that, that this PR treats mainly the testing, not really the implementation. So probably for the time being, we're just going to integrate it the way that it just works for IPv6. And I mean, it just tests it and then it fails. Uh, and then we have to figure out um, how, how actually it will work. So um, most of the others are kind of uh, ongoing. I know that uh, uh, the Asia, um, isn't that already in? That should be in already, Asia. Yeah, right? yeah, it's already in. Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, this one is almost uh, been, being completed, uh, I believe. I'm not sure what this one is. Um, I mean, these are the, the, the PRs that are on working. I believe that we are kind of having some hold on this. Um, and then we have the the backlog is uh, a little bit longer than what I would like to see. Um, but um, I think that we still have have some time to to figure these out. And maybe if we just uh, focus all our, all our efforts on the only on the labeled ones, then probably probably we'll be able to fix this for the stable. <clears throat> which is actually supposed to happen uh, in three weeks. So that's uh, that's more or less the status. I don't know if anyone has any specific questions, wants to outline something. I know that this one is also being worked on, right? AWS. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we have a little bit of uh, probably tech depth around um, occasional restarts uh, of network service manager. I mean, like in different restart scenarios, we have something, I know that Ivana is working on something um, and uh, also Andre and Ilya are also uh, you know, contributing to, 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 to how this, um, uh, having a stable restart and how to heal uh, mechanism. Um, but uh, apparently there are some corner cases uh, that, that that needs to be to be cleared. <laughs> I, I would say that these are the main. Uh, actually, we have a great news for the last week. We, we have uh, integrated uh, 202 from the VPP. Uh, and uh, this uh, apparently resolves a lot of issues and closed a lot of PRs, which was actually really great. So thanks for all the guys that actually took uh, took this uh, work. Uh, and that's more or less it from me. Uh, guys, can I just add one thing? Because uh, I'm trying to uh, get NSM tested on uh, all public uh, cloud. Mm -hmm. And but before that, um, there's some details I would like to learn because I know notice that some of the folks have already done jobs in uh, on GKE or Azure. So, so basically, what I noticed that is that uh, what we want to do is to do like say to build and test and to try to pass the, those CI tests, right? So, uh, so one thing is that uh, so we. So what kind of like say will 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 this bring any changes to the uh, to the clouds like say bottom like say uh, network infrastructures because uh, will will NSM really like say touch those uh, data planes like so because that definitely are gonna arise some issues on that so I'm not quite sure about that part. No, I mean it doesn't touch. So for the time being, we're just running uh, NSM as on. Uh, overlay networking layer on top of the existing infrastructure. I guess that once become kind of mainline and more mainstreamer than what we are today, maybe graduate from CNCF, I don't know. Uh, then um, I guess that there will be some kind of uh, integration with their uh, existing networking solution so that you should be able to just run network service manager on top and then it will talk straightly, maybe through some agent, I don't know, uh, to, to, to the infrastructure of the clouds. 
but um, I don't know if there's someone that, that knows the internals of some of these clouds or if you know something about Alibaba or mm -hmm. Huawei or whatever you you I mean is there um, mm -hmm. maybe maybe we can work through some solution that actually uh, integrates with the real networking um, infrastructure of the public cloud which would be even even better okay so if I'm not mistaken like say for currently we can trade like uh, what, what we are planning to do is like say to like for example get a uh, Kubernetes cluster on the public cloud and just tr try to run NSM like somehow like an app, something like that, without touching, without really touching the uh, yep. uh, lower that, level, like say, yep. That's Is exactly, that true? That's exactly oh. it. So we, we just run the, you know, we just, you know, the existing integration tests, basically, they just run the uh, NSM, you know, data, the NS manager daemon set and the BPP agent data plane data set, uh, daemon set. And then they, that's the infrastructure bits of NSM, but they run on any public cloud. And then you can run through putting whatever network service endpoints you'd like on top of that. Gotcha, great. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Finn. There's uh, in, uh, an, easier, an easy path to extend out the current existing stuff as well would be uh, someone could treat a VPC or some other similar thing as a, as a network service because of the, and so it becomes the subnet or the bridge domain that you that you or we'll say subnet in this scenario because cloud have a sense to be more low, layer three. So it could be the uh, the subnet you connect to, and then have uh, have VPNs connected through as part of that uh, as part of that cross connect. So there's so there's other there's other possibilities as well that would be uh, possible without having to actually manipulate the underlying infrastructure. At a uh, at in, at the fabric or or data center level, uh, and of course, if if the clouds feel that uh, they can gain benefit from adding NSM into their into their infrastructure, then like we'll, we'll, of course we'll, we'll help them out to work out like what what would be a, a way to make that look like. But right right, but the there's plenty of use cases that require uh, zero cooperation from them other than they don't uh, destroy their current APIs that people that, that people currently use for production. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks. That's uh, very helpful. And um, I'll let you guys know if there's any uh, update. Okay, great. So we have 20 more minutes um, and uh, an empty agenda. Not, I mean, not empty, but no, it's, nothing it's for it. Almost like we have an upcoming release. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, is it, this is this is really this is really great because usually when releases come for most projects, it's like uh, you're running around, everything's on fire. <laughs> oh. That was last week. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then Artem found a super obscure bug and. and to fix for it, so. And uh, we'll, we'll say that was in VPP. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's super funny is most of the things that we've had to fix in VPP aren't actually VPP bugs. Most of them are kernel bugs that we have to hack around in VPP because the kernel's not going to fix them. This one, I think, legitimately was a VPP bug. So it does happen. Yeah. OK, we'll, we'll say it was a kernel bug. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, Great. Well, is there anything that anyone would like to to talk about before we before we wrap it up and give people some time back? Yeah, I have one important agenda. <clears throat> Sorry for writing it late, uh, but I believe uh, we would need to update our documentation so that we reflect the um, exact state of uh, NSM. Uh, there's a bit of um, old models uh, uh, spread across different documents, so. Thoughts. So that's uh, that is on the agenda for the Wednesday stuff uh, for the for the Wednesday calls. Um, if there is a specific document that you think needs to be updated that you want to call out, um, definitely definitely call it call it out. Sure. Okay. Uh, so I think this is also like, for example, uh, the concept like channel. If you re recollect uh, when we started, we had the concept of channels. 
um, and uh, other definition around it. Of course, uh, what I'm trying to say is the what is NSM doc? That that's uh, Jeffrey pointed that out as well, and that's that is uh, on the short term agenda for um, for the NSM documentation goal. Right. Yeah. Either we can delete it or we can just uh, create an obsolete folder and then uh, put a disclaimer saying that the concepts have changed. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with. We had set it to draft and it didn't do anything, so I'm okay with uh, if someone wants to delete that uh, that document. It's in CI, so we can always, or rather, it's in Git, so we can always pull it back up. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. But just just to get it off the website for now. So Sounds if you want to submit a pull request for that, then uh, once it passes, I'll merge it. Sure. Yeah. Um, if you want to be a little bit more proactive in this, or rather, another option would be oh, actually, yeah, just delete it. We'll we'll, we'll just deal with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Is there uh, is there anything else? Great. So I will be expecting a pull request from you, Prem. And thank you, everyone, for uh, <laughs> uh, make make sure you sign off on it because it'll uh, it'll. Yeah. Be no, actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Only challenge is it has to be done in. Uh, there are like lots of other documents. It's spread across. So I think uh, uh, I need some time. I'll probably get a consolidated list of documents. We can have a quick sync up in our doc call and then conclude it. Perfect. Yeah, that, that'll work too. Yeah. Um, and then I, okay, <laughs> did I expect multiple report requests? Anyways, uh, thank you everyone. And uh, we will see you next, um, next week at the same time. And uh, take care. Sounds good. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Yeah, bye-bye.